Hello everyone and welcome to fifth lecture in the this series of introduction to remote sensing and in this particular lecture we are going to discuss interaction of uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, especially with atmosphere including scattering absorption and emission phenomena which really affects our uh, uh, remote sensing satellite based images. Uh, uh, if you see here what we find uh, that uh, there are lot of uh, scattering absorption and uh, other uh, emission phenomena occurs that you can see here that uh, uh, EMR source is uh, there and then it might be directly absorbed. Uh, there might be some scattering depending on the size of particles available which we will see little later different types of scattering as well. Then transmission uh, which is coming from say solar radiation and it interacts with the uh, objects which are present on the surface of the earth. Again there might be some absorptions and there uh, might be again scattering and then the return uh, signatures which goes to the sensor are also in it between absorbed or some scattering may occur because of atmos presence of atmosphere. So, all these things uh, keep happening and they really affects uh, our uh, images which are being acquired by the satellite. So, before this uh, radiation uh, which is used in remote sensing reaches the earth surface as indicated here, uh, it has to travel through some distances from the earth's atmosphere and this uh, total distance with it travels uh, back is around 840 kilometer when it is recorded by the satellite. But before that it is coming from the uh, sun which is very far. Uh, so, uh, particularly particles and gases which are present in the atmosphere can affect both the incoming and outgoing radiation and uh, these effects are basically caused by the mechanism of scattering and absorption phenomena. So, as we know that uh, uh, this uh, energy source is a, uh, a is there with sun and then uh, B is the radiation and atmosphere which is happening and then C is the interaction with target and uh, this figure we have seen. So, I am not spending much time on it. Then uh, D is the satellite system which records the energy returned by the uh, earth, surf, earth surface and objects and then finally, transmission reception analysis interpretation and finally, the applications. So, we come to now uh, different parts of uh, uh, atmosphere. So, the top layer here we are having exosphere where we are having our satellites, thermosphere where these uh, space shuttles are uh, generally fly, then we are having mesosphere where rockets and other things and stratosphere and troposphere. So, these all layers of atmosphere are present there we will go one by one like exo exosphere is outermost layer which is 700 to 10,000 kilometer thick contains most of the satellites orbiting. As we know that these earth orbiting solar uh, polar orbiting satellites are around 840 plus minus 10 kilometer. So, they are mostly in the in this uh, part of the atmosphere which is exosphere. Then next one is comes the thermosphere which is the second highest layer contains the ionosphere space shuttle orbits at this layer. So, the data which is acquired by these shuttle missions like uh, shuttle radar topographic missions which was used to uh, using uh, SAR interferometry to create a digital elevation model of the globe. So, there also uh, 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 these shuttles fly in that part. Then we are having mesosphere which is the third highest layer 50 to 80 kilometer mainly accessed by sounding rockets. So, in a typical satellite based remote sensing though the signals have to pass through this layer, but our we do not have any uh, sensors uh, in this range. Then a stratosphere and then troposphere is the lowest layer and uh, these layers uh, here uh, in especially in the troposphere there is maximum because the weather is here present. So, the clouds dust and fog and all these phenomena are basically present which are very close to the earth surface. So, if we if we start looking uh, the especially the scattering and absorption phenomena scattering occurs when particles 
or large gases molecules present in the atmosphere interact with the and cause the electromagnetic radiation to be redirected from its original path. And uh, so that uh, see the, uh, the reflection or reflected energy has to go to the satellite, but uh, before that it gets uh, diverted or redi redirected to uh, from its original path and the sufficient energy uh, do not reach to uh, the satellite. And the how much scattering takes place depend on the several factors, especially the particle size and gases present. Uh, is also the wavelength of the radiation at what wavelength we are looking and uh, then abundance of particles, gases and uh, the distance from the radiation travel through the atmosphere. So, if we if it has to travel, uh, travel a very long distance uh, especially along the horizon then we might be having uh, the problem, but along zenith if it is the minimum then the distortions which may cause by the uh, atmospheric scattering may be little less. And there are basically three types of scatterings which affects the uh, satellite images and which, uh, which happens in the atmosphere before signal reaches to the satellites which we will see one by one. And the first one is the Rayleigh scattering uh, which occurs when particles are very small compared to the wavelength of the radiation. So, especially in the uh, smaller wavelength bands and uh, this Rayleigh scattering uh, phenomena uh, can be observed as you can see here they say that the outgoing radiation which uh, which will be reaching ultimately to the satellite the relay scattering might occur here in this part especially uh, to the wavelength which are very small. The, and these could be the particles such as small packs of dust, nitrogen and oxygen molecules. So, mainly the gases and a very tiny particles of dust can, uh, uh, can create relay scattering. Relay scattering causes shorter wavelengths of energy to be scattered much more than the longer wavelength. So, it affects mainly in the shorter wavelength. Relay scattering is the dominant scattering mechanism in the upper atmosphere part which is uh, mainly shown here, where the small particles can reach, larger one cannot reach there. So, uh, this is if we start uh, counting the total uh, radiation say, say 100 percent is the, the sun which is giving to us. So, it gives a that how the radiation uh, get distributed that the incoming radiation which was 100 percent 17 percent absorbed by the water vapor dust and ozone before even it reaches to the surface of the earth. Again 4 percent might be observed uh, absorbed by the clouds then uh, 47 percent is absorbed by the ground then uh, in a tiny part which is 7 percent is reflected by the surface maybe you are might be having water body and that may reach to the uh, satellite through uh, passing through the atmosphere in between the clouds can again reflect and 19 percent of that energy is reflected back and uh, maybe the 6 percent of energy may get scattered uh, back scattered by the air uh, far before it reaches uh, to the surface of the earth. There are uh, some natural long wave radiations which are also contributing. So, if there is a 15 percent total then only 8 percent reaches uh, to the outer atmosphere, 7 percent is absorbed by the clouds or uh, gases present within the atmosphere very close to the earth and there might be emissions uh, within the atmosphere about water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone which may contribute 40 percent and then emission by the clouds. 20 percent and land and ocean they emit uh, the latent heat transfer of about 25 percent. So, this is how these things uh, can affect uh, as here soon that uh, when uh, this uh, it has to be like in sunset or sunrise conditions the, uh, the solar radiation has to pass through long distance within the atmosphere when it is along the horizon then uh, it's a different situation when it has to pass through the uh, zenith then uh, it's a different situation both uh, are shown here it is the uh, you know in normal conditions this is in the sunset or sunrise the fact that uh, we know that why sky appears blue during day is because the following phenomena 
as uh, we have uh, gone through during our school days that the sunlight passes through atmosphere the shorter wavelength that is the blue the visible spectrum are scattered more than the other long wave uh, longer visible band and as you can see the shorter wavelength uh, part of visible spectrum is falling in the blue part and therefore we see our sky uh, generally blue in morning and evening sunrise and sunset light has to travel as i have already mentioned through the atmosphere and at uh, the midday and the it is uh, directly coming scattering of a uh, shorter wavelength is more complete and this leaves a greater portion of longer wavelengths to penetrate the atmosphere so therefore uh, these uh, uh, the distances through which uh, the solar radiation has to pass and uh, on the wavelength in which we are looking will depend on these things now the second type of scattering is a mu scattering and when it occurs when the particles are just about the same size as the wavelength of the radiation and uh, uh, the dust pollen smoke water vapor are common causes of mu scattering which tend to affect longer wavelengths than those by affected by relay scattering relay scattering always will affect the shorter, shorter wavelength bands so here is the various types of scattering of visible light uh, like air molecules uh, which are having of uh, this these dimensions mainly scattering will occur of relay type the phenomena like blue sky red sunset in the evening then aerosols which are present nowadays lot and uh, therefore uh, there the particle size is much larger and then mes there are chances of mes scattering will occur in the longer wavelength and uh, uh, this will create the brownish or a smog uh, phenomena uh, which is like uh, being observed in the winter seasons every year and uh, then uh, there might be cloud droplets which are having very large size compared to air molecules or aerosols uh, 10 to 100 micrometer and uh, then uh, this is type of scattering we call as geometric scattering and basically the white clouds are observed so when we observed the fog phenomena basically fog uh, uh, or nowadays what we see is not only the fog it is a smoke plus uh, fog in the uh, bees in short we say smog so uh, both type of scattering may occur mu scattering and geometric scattering and the major uh, uh, problem with this is because of uh, then it creates the very poor visibility mu scattering also uh, which occurs mostly in lower portions of atmosphere where the larger particles are more abundant unlike relay scattering which occurs in the uh, upper part of atmosphere because of smaller particles are involved and uh, uh, and uh, this dominates when cloud conditions are overcast when you are having more cloudy conditions and especially as i have mentioned during fox season winter season uh, we uh, observe this mu scattering and visibility near the surface of the earth uh, reduces drastically and uh, uh, then uh, the final scattering mechanism one more type of uh, scattering we um, i mentioned here this is geometric or we also call as non selective scattering uh, this occurs when particles are much larger than the wavelength of the radiation and especially water droplets larger dust particles can cause this type of scattering and non selective scattering this name comes from the fact that all wavelengths are scattered about equally and this type of scattering uh, causes fog and clouds to appear white blue green red and uh, ultimately white to our eyes and uh, once uh, this non selective scattering occurs the visibility reduces further now uh, another phenomena which is uh, associated uh, in satellite images especially the solar radiation uh, back solar radiation which is reaching to the satellite is the absorption phenomena and not only this absorption phenomena uh, reduces the quality of our images but also it restrict uh, uh, where uh, in which part of em spectrum our bands or channels or sensors can be designed so absorption is a very very important phenomena from both point of view that uh, 
this uh, uh, this mechanism of that it works when electromagnetic radiation interacts with the atmosphere and the large amount of energy it uh, uh, contrast to scattering this phenomena causes molecules of atmosphere to absorb energy at various wavelengths and very gases which are present in the atmosphere like ozone carbon dioxide water vapors are the three main atmospheric constituents which really observe absorb the large amount of uh, uh, solar uh, radiation as you can see that uh, about 17 percent uh, incoming solar radiation is directly absorbed before it reaches to the ground. But when it goes back again then again it is absorbed and uh, the ozone serves to absorb and uh, the harmful or most living things ultraviolet radiation from the sun without this protective layer in the atmosphere our skin would burn when exposed to the sunlight. So, uh, this is very important about uh, this uh, phenomena there are always a blessing in disguise. So, ozone is absorbing a lot of the a lot of solar radiation otherwise it can be very harmful. Carbon dioxide referred as a greenhouse gas in, uh, in our environmental sense and it uh, uh, because it tends to absorb radiation strongly in far infrared portion of the spectrum and that area is associated with thermal heating which serves to trap this heat inside the atmosphere. So, carbon dioxide uh, absence of carbon dioxide uh, will, uh, will benefit, but whereas absence of ozone uh, will harm the humans. So, the presence of these gases are important and their absorptions are also important. Water vapor in the atmosphere absorbs much of the incoming and outgoing short wave infrared and long wave microwave uh, radiation and that is between 22 micrometer to 1 meter. The presence of water vapor which, uh, which are uh, in certain seasons is very high and uh, especially in the lower atmosphere which varies from location to location at different times of the year uh, because it has got the seasonal. So, this is the 40 percent absorption is there this is outgoing uh, this is shown in the red color and uh, this outgoing is 40 percent absorbed by the water vapor and uh, other gases. For example, air mass above a desert would have very little water vapor to absorb energy while the tropics would have high concentration of water vapor because of very high humidity. And uh, because of these gases absorbed electromagnetic energy in very specific regions of the spectrum, they influence where the spectrum uh, we can look for remote sensing purposes. So, here uh, again I am bringing this uh, that absorptions from remote sensing sensors point of view, design point of view is very important important. So, different gases are absorbed and they provide us uh, uh, if, uh, if it is no energy is not absorbed then those part of EM spectrum are we call as atmospheric windows which we will see just little later and they provide the opportunity to put uh, certain bands or channels in the sensor to acquire data of the surface of the earth. So, these are the atmospheric window of a small part of EM spectrum is shown here like uh, it is completely opaque of this part of EM spectrum where because of ozone and uh, oxygen molecule molecular oxygen it is completely observed where in the in the visible part there is a one window is available and uh, we referred as a visible window. Then in infrared there are some, some windows are there in between these are the blue uh, uh, lines are showing that uh, these parts are opaque because of presence of different gases, water molecules and carbon dioxide. In uh, microwave windows are also there where different sensors have been designed and uh, like in radio windows here uh, because of larger wavelength the smaller particles may not affect and uh, we are having a large window for radio transmissions and then there are uh, other places also might be the window. So, we are mainly uh, in satellite remote sensing we are mainly concerned in the visible windows, infrared windows and microwave windows. See uh, these are the uh, these are the atmospheric windows uh, that uh, 2 to 2.5 micrometer and so on the maximum, uh, maximum absorptions are occurring 
at, uh, at uh, these places uh, where the peaks are uh, shown here in these uh, parts uh, the blue peaks are shown here. So, uh, here is the like uh, these uh, this first uh, between 0 0.93 uh, to 1.87 micrometer uh, these different uh, uh, maximum absorptions are available or are caused by the water vapor present in the atmosphere. Then at 2.7 the carbon dioxide 2.74 again water vapor and then again carbon dioxide and likewise the presence of water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone and other gases oxygen may cause these absorption bends. However, we are still having some atmospheric windows available to us uh, to put certain uh, sensors on board the satellite. So, visible part we are having some windows in infrared part we are having and definitely in the microwave region and radio. Uh, these uh, uh, the, the if we look the definition of atmospheric window is a part of that spectrum or EM spectrum which are not severely influenced by atmospheric absorption uh, which are useful for remote sensing uh, satellites or sensors and we call as atmospheric windows where the uh, your uh, influence by the absorption is at minimum. Uh, in the visible portion of EM spectrum our eyes are most sensitive correspond to the both an atmospheric window and the peak energy level of the sun as we can see here that this is the, uh, the, the solar radiation which is reaching is also coinciding with the visible part and that is the maximum energy is available here whereas when we go towards the higher wavelength it reduces uh, further. And uh, this energy emitted by the earth correspond to a window around uh, 10 micrometer in the thermal infrared portion of spectrum where uh, some sensors have been designed uh, to take that data. And the large window at wavelengths beyond 1 uh, millimeter is associated with uh, microwave region. So, that is microwave region is also uh, available for the window. So, this brings to the end of uh, this particular topic which is the interaction of atmosphere, uh, interaction of solar uh, electromagnetic radiation with the atmosphere and uh, three types of uh, scattering phenomena and absorption phenomena. How these affects our design of sensors or availability of atmospheric window to acquire uh, satellite data. Thank you very much.